Quranic miracle, my journey with the bees, Ahmad Gumi. God said in the Quran. Soon will we show them our signs in the horizon, and in themselves, until it becomes manifest to them that this is the truth. Is it not enough that thy Lord doth witness over all things? The journey, when I started to truly contemplate the verses of the Quran. I was stunned by two verses of the chapter of the bees in the Quran. By then, I was already a graduate of medical school. I was brought up in a family of scholarly awareness, I started learning the Quran from my father as small as I was and can remember. But the emphasis then was to memorize it and learn to read it in its Arabic form as much as one could without necessarily understanding what one is reading. I was brought up to believe the Quran as the Word of God inspired to our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and the absolute truth. To have any iota of doubt about it was not in my DNA and my upbringing which was already, if it's right to say metamorphose generations after generations to adapt to that fact. The verses in question. Arabic text. Literally translated as. And thy Lord inspired to the bee that you should take from the hills houses, and from the trees, and from what they people are building. Then you should eat of all the fruits, then follow the path of your Lord made acquiescently and conquered, from its belly comes out a drink of different colors, wherein is a cure for the people, in this is a sign for those who are contemplating. Quran chapter 16 verse 68 to 69. The second verse, verse 69, is popularly believed to have prescribed the use of honey as a divine cure for human diseases. Nobody can think otherwise since the medicinal value of honey is widely believed. A Hausa adage says, medicine is made out of old honey. Neither did any non-Muslim raise any objection, since honey, time immemorial was considered one of the medicinal therapy or ingredients of medication in almost every human culture and experience, way before the advent of Islam in 580 AD. To Muslims, this common belief was also buttressed by two of the most trusted books of narrations, Bukhari and Muslim. In the chapter of Medicine for Stomach Ailments chapter 24 and chapter 31, the chapter of Drinking Honey for Treatment, respectively. The narration came from Abu Sa'id al-Qudri who said, A man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him and said, My brother is having a loose stool diarrhea. Then the Messenger of Allah said to him, Give him honey to drink, he then gave him honey to drink and came back to him and said, I've indeed given him honey to drink, but it did not increase him anything except more diarrhea. The Prophet then said to him three times the same thing, but he came back the fourth time and he the Prophet said, Give him honey to drink, he then replied, I've indeed fed him with it but did not increase him anything except more loose stool. Then the Messenger of Allah said, Allah has said the truth and your brother's stomach has lied. He then gave him to drink again and got cured. In retrospect, there is a dramatic scenario here. Today, with better knowledge of medicine, we know diarrhea has many causes. The man who came to the Prophet, peace be upon him must be suffering from acute diarrhea from the history of onset and the few days or hours or bouts of his ailment. The most commonly identified causes of acute diarrhea in adults are the bacterial infection especially Staphylococcus aureus, from food poisoning. It can also be caused by Salmonella, Campylobacter, Shigella, and Escherichia coli. It's not usually serious and most people get better within a few days without even treatment. Others less common are Clostridium perfringens, Clostridium botulinum, Campylobacter, Cyclospora, Listeria and may require vigorous systemic antibiotic treatment. Honey has some antibiotic properties against surface bacteria but cannot be used to treat serious invasive gastroenteritis that requires strong antibiotic medication and rehydration. It can, however, be very effective in treating superficial wound sepsis. 
Honey has been linked to health benefits like improved heart health, wound healing, and blood antioxidant status. However, consuming too much may cause adverse effects due to its high sugar and calorie content. It can also worsen heartburn in patients with gastric, peptic ulcer disease due to its acidic content. In modern medicine, honey is not considered to be an effective systemic antibacterial to treat serious infections. To me, if the verse refers to these medical uses as a sign for those who are contemplating, then there is some triviality of its importance in my perception to receive this accolade and epithet in the holy book. Something is missing in my comprehension. Yet, the verse 68, has shown some harbinger of the great miracle of what is to come from the study of bees. Then follow the paths of your Lord made acquiescently and subjugated. We'll discuss it later. And thy Lord inspired to the bee that you should take from the hill's houses, and from trees, and from what they people are building, then you should eat of all the fruits. Then you should eat of all the fruits, then you should eat of all the fruits, this was another poser for me. From a scientific documentary film I watched. Bees don't eat fruits but suck the nectar in flowers with their proboscis. And gather the pollen in their hind legs in what is called pollen basket corbicula, to transport it to the hive. The nectar is further digested by enzymes in the bee's honey stomach. The pollen is then stuffed in hexagonal cells. The nectar they drink gives them the energy for such tremendous energy demanding flight with loads of pollen. And also regurgitates the nectar first to others. Then finally ending into the cell as honey of degraded hydrocarbon sugars. Consequently, honey has carbohydrates as the main component of honey, about 82%. The rest is composed of proteins and amino acids, enzymes, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. The vitamins are only tiny traces. A typical bee hive. A highly organized social insect. Hexagonal cells for brooding eggs and storing honey. Later, after a deeper study of the Arabic language of which the Quran is the pinnacle of its beauty and eloquence Balaga, a distinctive part of Balaga called Toria explains the wisdom in choice of words to me. Sentences or words are constructed or used in a speech to have two correct meanings, one more apparent and the other less obvious, yet the less obvious is the objective of the speech. When nectar is referred to as fruits in the verse, it's a style of allegorical speech in metaphor. This is the type called unrestricted metaphor or majaz mersal in Arabic. That is by naming something with what it will be in the end result. An example in the Quran. Allah said in chapter 39 verse 30, Indeed you Muhammad, are dead and they are also dead this is because they are ultimately going to die. Only God remains alive. Another example, in chapter 12 verse 36, I see myself in a dream pressing wine. Meaning pressing grapes. This is because wine is the ultimate end result of pressing grapes in its production. In that sense, nectar is called fruits, because the pollination that takes place during eating the nectar is very essential in the development of flowers into fruits. Notwithstanding, if I can get a better explanation, I'll be more comfortable rather than this possibility and tarwil. My experience with the Quran is that most of its wording goes with the apparent meaning called zahir. Then follow the paths of your Lord made acquiescently and conquered. Already, in 1973, an Austrian ethologist, Karl von Frisch, who died in 1982 AD, got the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. For being first to translate the meaning of the bee waggle dance, which if I could remember my father saying the Quran has since hinted us about, that is, bees are inspired to navigate for food, here an inspiration means a highly specialized intelligent knowledge beyond human comprehension. Though what the Quran didn't mention is the role of the sun in the position targeting. 
the verse is still very stimulating. Bees must be genetically coded to perform this feat. They don't have the mental capacity to think it out themselves. It's just logical that there must be a superintelligence that inspired this delicate intelligent social behavior in a small insect whose brain is smaller than a pin head. From its belly comes out a drink of different colors. This was earlier understood to be honey, and an excretion of the bees. However recent studies showed it was actually a vomit regurgitated from nectar the bee collects from flowers. Passed from one bee to another and so forth, using the enzymes in their honey stomach to digest the nectar into mainly fructose and glucose. They then vomit the digest into cells which dries and becomes condensed honey. But why did the verse avoid using the word honey, rather called it a drink? While we see elsewhere in the Quran in chapter 47 verse 15, honey is precisely mentioned. And rivers of honey pure and clear. There must be a catch. The drink is also called a drink of different colors. Honey is only known to come in different shades of golden, yellowish, or brownish paste-like substance. Moreover, it is precisely not drunk in the literal sense. It is only drunk when mixed with another liquid or just licked. This careful choice of wordings brings us back to the metaphor of Arabic balaga. In Arabic like other languages the strength and beauty of expression lies in its metaphor. Wherein is a cure for people. Cure only comes when the disease is known. So, what does this indefinite cure probably mean today? First, as a rule, cure must be for sick people since not all people are sick. Bringing us back again to the metaphor of Balaga, since the verse literally mentioned honey as a cure for all people while some are meant. Another example in the Quran chapter 4 verse 102, where a general statement is meant for few. But there is no blame on you if ye put away your arms because of the inconvenience of rain or because ye are ill, but take every precaution for yourselves. Or because ye are ill, meaning if some of you are ill, since not all the army in combat would be sick. Then back to honey. It cures a few ailments found in some people but not all people. Yet the verse is apparent that there is a specific kind of cure shifa on for a general human malady. Verily in this, is a miracle for those who are contemplating. A miracle and a sign for people who reflect and ponder. Definitely not for common folks who do not think, deliberate, and reason. This last portion of the verse, calls for closer analysis and thoughtful consideration of the wordings and probing deeper for the meaning of the verse. It's more than what meets the common eyes. In this state of contemplation or misperception, as I was reading my old textbook Davidson's Principles and Practice of Medicine, I came across a small brief explanation of how ascorbic acid was discovered and how, in a 1497 expedition of Vasco da Gama, who set out to India with about 200 sailors, only to lose the majority of them to a disease called scurvy. And that at one point, citrus fruits were discovered by sailors to prevent the development of this slow fatal disease, however, the actual effective ingredient was not isolated until about 300 years later, when an animal armadillo was found to also depend on fruits for survival like humans and was used in laboratory experimentation. Ascorbic acid, hexuronic acid is a water-soluble vitamin. Humans and other primates do not synthesize it because they lack L-gulinolactone oxidase GULO enzyme, which is required in the last step of vitamin C synthesis by converting monosaccharides to vitamin C. All species that do not synthesize ascorbate require it in their diet. Deficiency causes scurvy in humans and somewhat similar symptoms in other animals. Like bleeding gums. We now have a specific disease scurvy, which can afflict all humans if they lack a specific medicine ascorbic acid found in a drink juice of different colors from fruits. 
Before this knowledge was known it took a heavy toll on human lives in millions and suffering over centuries since when men rode the sea away from fruits and vegetables for months. The history of discovering vitamin C is important to understand the suffering mankind endures from lack of knowledge of his own body. Below is an abridged account from Wikipedia for reference. The symptoms include, malaise and lethargy, shortness of breath, bone pain and myalgias due to reduced carnitine production. Other symptoms include skin changes with roughness, easy bruising and petechiae, gum disease, loosening of teeth, poor wound healing, and emotional changes. In the late stages, jaundice, generalized edema, oliguria, neuropathy, fever, convulsions, and eventual death are frequently seen. Scurvy will improve with doses of vitamin C as low as 10 mg per day, though doses of around 100 mg per day are typically recommended. Most people make a full recovery within two weeks. In the 13th century, the Crusaders frequently suffered from scurvy. In the 1497 expedition of Vasco da Gama, the curative effects of citrus fruit became known and confirmed by Pedro Álvarez Cabral and his crew in 1507. In 1500, one of the pilots of Cabral's fleet bound for India noted that in Malindi, its king offered the expedition fresh supplies such as lambs, chickens, and ducks, along with lemons and oranges, due to which some of our ill were cured of scurvy. Unfortunately, these travel accounts did not stop further maritime tragedies caused by scurvy, first because of the lack of communication between travelers and those responsible for their health, and because fruits and vegetables could not be kept for long on ships. In February 1601, Captain James Lancaster, while sailing to Sumatra, landed on the northern coast to specifically obtain lemons and oranges for his crew to stop scurvy. Captain Lancaster conducted an experiment using four ships under his command. One ship's crew received routine doses of lemon juice, while the other three ships did not receive any such treatment. As a result, members of the non-treated ships started to contract scurvy, with many dying. During the age of exploration between 1500 and 1800, it has been estimated that scurvy killed at least 2 million sailors. 2 million sailors died to scurvy Jonathan Lamb wrote, in 1499, Vasco da Gama lost 116 of his crew of 170. In 1520, Magellan lost 208 out of 230, all mainly to scurvy. In 1734, the Leiden-based physician Johann Backström published a book on scurvy in which he stated, scurvy is solely owing to total abstinence from fresh vegetable food, and greens, which is alone the primary cause of the disease and urged the use of fresh fruit and vegetables as a cure. My comment, for the first time after about 1,100 years of Islam, scurvy is just understood to be caused by lack of fruits, but why nobody knows yet, despite that the Quran was almost point-blank about the fact. That is the miracle. During the 18th century, the disease killed more British sailors than enemy action. It was mainly by scurvy that George Anson, in his celebrated voyage of 1740 to 1744, lost nearly two-thirds of his crew 1,300 out of 2,000 within the first ten months of the voyage. The Royal Navy enlisted 184,899 sailors during the Seven Years' War, 133,708 of these were missing or died from disease, and scurvy was the leading cause. Although throughout this period sailors and naval surgeons were increasingly convinced that citrus fruits could cure scurvy, the classically trained physicians who ran the medical establishment dismissed this evidence as mere anecdote which did not conform to current theories of disease. Literature championing the cause of citrus juice, therefore, had no practical impact. 
The medical theory was based on the assumption that scurvy was a disease of internal putrefaction brought on by faulty digestion caused by the hardships of life at sea and the naval diet. Although this basic idea was given different emphasis by successive theorists, the remedies they advocated and which the Navy accepted amounted to little more than the consumption of fizzy drinks to activate the digestive system, the most extreme of which was the regular consumption of elixir of vitriol sulfuric acid taken with spirits and barley water, and laced with spices. In 1764, a new variant appeared. Advocated by Dr. David McBride and Sir John Pringle, Surgeon General of the Army and later President of the Royal Society. This idea was that scurvy was the result of a lack of fixed air in the tissues which could be prevented by drinking infusions of malt and wort whose fermentation within the body would stimulate digestion and restore the missing gases. These ideas received wide and influential backing when James Cook set off to circumnavigate the world 1768 to 1771 in Humbark endeavor malt and wort were top of the list of the remedies he was ordered to investigate the others were beer sauerkraut and linz rob the list did not include lemons in 1927, Hungarian biochemist Szent Gyorgyi isolated a compound he called hexuronic acid. Szent Gyorgyi suspected hexuronic acid, which he had isolated from adrenal glands, to be the antiscorbutic agent, but he could not prove it without an animal deficiency model. In 1932, the connection between hexuronic acid and scurvy was finally proven by American researcher Charles Glenn King of the University of Pittsburgh. King's laboratory was given some hexuronic acid by St. Gorgi and soon established that it was the sought-after anti-scorbutic agent. Because of this, hexuronic acid was subsequently renamed ascorbic acid. Now if we look at the Quranic verse closely, we can see that two informations were crafted and eloquently expressed in a way that would satisfy the mental development of men across all generations. Before the knowledge of the cure of scurvy, most people who read the Quran understood that the verse refers to honey. With increasing knowledge, the verse apparently also appears to be giving a hint that a cure is in the belly of fruits, not bees, as the pronoun ha in the verse i.e. from its belly easily goes back to fruits. Eat of all the fruits, from its belly comes out a drink of different colors i.e. from the pulp of fruits we get fruit juice, which are more colorful. In fact, for every known color to human is a fruit juice of the same color unlike honey. Juice of every color. Juice of different colors. Juice of different taste. All rich in vitamin C the cure of scurvy. Fruits juice are the richest source of ascorbic acid that every human needs in order to get protected from scurvy, a deadly disease. Richest sources of vitamin C. The following are the five richest sources of vitamin C found in fruits and vegetables, in descending order. 1. Raw guava. 2. Raw sweet red pepper. 3. Tomato juice. 4. Orange juice. 5. Sweet green pepper. When we consider that this knowledge is succinctly mentioned in the Quran since 620 AD, it is not possible that human knows it and yet millions die of a disease for hundreds of years afterward, something that could be cured by this supposedly simple knowledge. This is enough a proof that the inspiration of the Quran must have come from the same source that designed human beings who cannot synthesize water-soluble ascorbic acid in their body and that life of humanity depends on it. Verily in this is a miracle for those who are contemplating. In Quran chapter 16 verse 69 Allah said, on the earth are signs for those of assured faith, as also in your own selves, will ye not then see? The The God of Abraham who inspired the bee, must be the same God that inspired the Quran. O our Lord! 
I have made some of my offspring to dwell in a valley without plants, by thy sacred house, in order, O our Lord, that they may establish regular prayer, so fill the hearts of some among men with love towards them, and feed them with fruits, so that they may give thanks. Quran chapter 14 verse 37. And feed them with fruits. This is the prayer of Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, indicating that life cannot thrive in a desolate place without fruits and vegetables, the essentials of life. This is how my journey with the bees reaffirmed my faith that Allah has truly inspired Muhammad, the last of all prophets, peace be upon them. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.